assorted items. Uh, try to take them in order of uh, brevity. I see that we have the Cordoba case for imposition of sentence. I don't see either Ms. Rumley or Ms. Millinan. All right. Any sightings of Mr. Millinan at this point? Not yet, Your Honor. All right. We'll recall that. Uh, the Goff case is a plea agreement and motion to set aside no contact order. Yes, Are we ready on that? And for the state? All right. Uh, ready to proceed on both sides? We've kind of been really aware this morning that the Ms. Goff has two cases. Um, you know, good one we call. Um, was made aware just a few moments ago that she's not going to be pointing out the dual case. So I've submitted it. So unfortunately, that means that we need to remove that case from the school. Um, I, put, I just put in the request to do so. Um, it has not committed some time to get that done. Um, so I can continue to check for it. At this time, I don't have that. I don't have this motion. All right, so Ms. Goff is now present on 21 CF 426. And this was apparently scheduled, Mr. Uh, Lucarelli, for two purposes a plea agreement and a motion to set aside no contact order. What is your understanding as to what will occur today? Judge, I think we're going to enter a plea to the 19 CF case. Public defender representing the job on the 21 CF case. Um, she's chosen to go, to go about this way. And we met with her on Friday. We don't think it's in her best interest to do that, but she wants to do that and, and get out and see where the other uh, case lies. So the, are both uh, matters in the same case or in different cases? Different cases. And the state now has a score sheet issue that it has to revise? Yes, sir. I have to revise the school sheet to remove the 21 CF 426 case. Um, and that one will have its own school sheet and this one will have its own. Um, and that does, I just did that maybe five minutes ago, was when I learned that the, the both cases were not going to flee. So it takes a little bit of time to be able to get that done. I expect that I'd be, I'll, I'll have it done this afternoon, but I couldn't tell you on how. Yes, and I apologize. We met with Ms. Scott Friday afternoon. Mr. Bill and I met with her on Friday. We spent an hour there at the jail. I thought we were close to resolving both cases but today. She wanted the weekend to think about it. She just told us a few minutes ago that she's not ready. So, to does the state need additional time before we address either matter? Yes, sir. Um, with an accurate score sheet as, as it is. Okay. Are we able to address it this afternoon or on a different date? Like, uh, I believe we can deal with this afternoon. Um, All right. Mr. Khalil, any comments? Uh, no, Your Honor, I'm not available during the afternoon, but I believe Mr. Lucarelli can handle the resolution of his case. All right. So uh, we're going to, is there going to be any witnesses presented for the motion to lift no contact? Yes, Your Honor. She, I believe, um, she thought the court was at 9 o'clock. Um, she determined that it was 1 30, so if she's not here again, I'll have to be continued to another date. Okay, so that's not the person sitting behind you there? No, no. Okay. So we're not able to go forward on a no contact motion? Correct. You're going to reset that? Yes. Okay. What that leaves then is a plea agreement on one of the two cases? That's correct, Your Honor. Just for the record, the 21 CF 426 case, which is going to be the one that's not playing out, um, because the defendant has rejected that offer, that offer is now gone. Uh, there is no offer in that case at this point. Okay. So on the, uh, you're confirming at this time, Mr. Lucarelli, then, that that will be the way we'll proceed then? Yes, Your Honor. And we'll recall the one case as requested this afternoon, whenever the state has the score sheet ready. Uh, as far as the no contact order, that'll need to be reset. The case that is not resolving by plea, do we want to set that for a pretrial or case management? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what is requested by the defense? I'm not sure what stage we were at with the case before. Your Honor, I believe we were at the case management. Um, we wanted to address this no contact order um, both before we set it for trial. Um, and so at this point, we have that case management. Okay. What is the next case management, same matter for? July 15th. Is that adequate? Yes, Your Honor. 
state agrees to that date? Yes, sir. And that's for which case number? 21 CF 426. All right, the other case, or in that, that case that we set for case management, one that has the no contact order uh, motion, that, that will be reset by Mr. Khalil? Yes, sir, I will coordinate the state your office. Okay. And Mr. Lucarelli, you're able to uh, wait until the state is ready on the score sheet. <coughs> Anything else? I uh, will recall Ms. Goff then when the state is ready. Which then uh, brings us Mr. Khalil and Mr. Ashby to State v. Morris, 19 CF 353. And this is a motion to suppress. Are we ready to proceed on this? Yes, sir, I do have to say that Mr. Morris is not here. Um, I propose that we take the testimony of the witnesses that are here um, and then address his actions afterwards. Okay. And the folks that are in the courtroom now are, are, are none of those folks? Correct, Your Honor. Okay. And the state is ready to begin, Mr. Ashby? Uh, Your Honor, I think we should address the defendant after is the defense waiving his appearance uh, at this time? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I mean, he has to testify as well. Uh, but we his Are you aware of any circumstances affecting his attendance? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, there are witnesses for the state and defense waiting? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Ashby, uh, what's your position on the defendant's non attendance? Thank you. This, Your Honor, this is a motion to suppress. I would say that the written policy is not a written waiver and the file for a motion to suppress, or for a not a credit for a motion to suppress, um, is a key uh, juncture in the, in, the, in the proceedings. Furthermore, um, if the defense stated that they intended him to be here to testify, uh, I'm not going to just supplant him in um, once he decides to join us. Uh, I think I'll be deciding without his testimony, is what it looks like. You, you may very well be, Your Honor, since they petitioned that the state request a bench warrant uh, for his non appearance. Now, Mr. Morris actually has a pretrial conference tomorrow, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, your Honor, he hasn't missed any court dates. Uh, we maintain adequate communication. Um, this is unusual for him. I, I'm not sure why he's not here. Uh, but well, the uh, state's motion for a bench warrant is denied. We will proceed with the hearing at this time uh, in his absence. Uh, any preliminary comments? No, Your Honor. Go straight that. All right. Uh, you may do so. And stay in the court. All right, uh, Mr. Khalil, do you have uh, witnesses present? If you could instruct them, please. Yes, Your Honor. Could you right, face the clerk? Clerk, and bring the right hand before him. Do you saw him swear from the other two seconds? Check the truth. I hope he's not the best. I do. Please have a seat. Witness box. Good afternoon, officer. Welcome. Hi, Your Honor. Your Honor, before we begin, I believe that gentlemen, you have a court. Mr. Rosado, I don't believe I have him on the docket for a Madam Clerk, are you able to determine if Mr. Rosado has a court date? Do you have a case number, Mr. Rosado? Let me just see if the clerk can find out. That name does sound familiar, right? Yeah. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now we know you know. <laughs> okay. All right, without further ado, Mr. Ashby. Thank you, Officer. Uh, good afternoon, Officer. Can you please state your name for the record? Uh, Corporal Matthew Pagoli. Thank you, Spoiler Lab. Uh, Keith and Peter. Uh, CC. Uh, and sir, how are you employed? I work for the Clark County Sheriff's Office. And what are your duties for the Clark County Sheriff's Office? Uh, to enforce all state statutes and uh, traffic violations within the county. And how long have you been with the Clark County Sheriff's Office? Uh, June will be seven years. Uh, um, were you with the Collier County Sheriff's Office back on February 12th of 2019? Yes. Do you have an opportunity to uh, interact with an individual by the name of Brady Morris? Yes. Sir, um, and how, what was the nature of that interaction? I came in contact with Mr. Morris during a traffic stop for the results of my arrest at Colonel Thomas. Now, what was the basis for the traffic stop? Stop sign. And where did that stop sign uh, violation occur? Larson Lake. Um, and do you know the intersection? Uh, it's Larson Lake Pine Ridge. Sure, I'm sure. You know, I'm in the rest of the self defense office to mark the state's exhibits one and four? Yes. May I approach the police, Sean? Yes. I'm showing you what's been marked as safety exhibits one through four. Do you recognize them? Yes. And what do you recognize from that? Uh, this is the uh, Spinnaker area. This is where I came in contact with Mr. Morris. All right, starting with uh, state exhibit one, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the location? Yes. And state exhibit two, is that also a fair and accurate depiction of the area where this truck, uh, the truck violation took place? Yes. Uh, same with uh, state exhibits three and four. Yes. You have state moves and the state exhibits one through four and evidence. Defense? No. Admitted. Corporal, looking at uh, the Not come to a stop sign. Uh, oh, four wheels did stop. Just keep the stop sign going. Um, and is there a stop sign on that uh, at that intersection? Uh, of course, and Pine Ridge, yes. Now, State Exhibit 1 is the intersection, what is the intersection of Larson and Pine Ridge? Is that correct? Yes. Um, in your report, you stated that there was a, another street intersection where they interacted with the Yes. Yeah. Um, what was the reason for that? Um, I'm not familiar with the area. Um, I was getting confused by the street names. Um, at that time, I didn't know that W. Morrison, you know, W. ran this way, Morrison ran the other way. I wasn't sure. Okay. So, was it that you're familiar with the physical layout, but not the names of the street? Correct. Is that the reason for why then you did it? Um, you got the intersection of Larson and Dudley? Yes. So let's talk, well, let's talk about Larson and Dudley. Um, is there a stop sign on Dudley? On Dudley, yes. If you, and Dudley and Larson intersect at a T intersection. Correct. Now, looking at, uh, I believe it's State Exhibit 2, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. If the defendant wished to turn right onto Larson, is there a stop sign there? Yes. And if you do not want to stop by a stop sign, obviously that's in the crash. Yes. Looking at State Exhibit 3, if the defendant was to turn left onto Larson, is there a stop sign there? Yes. And if the defendant stop, does not stop there, that's also a violation? Correct. Looking at State Exhibit 4, that shows the uh, Larson and the public spinning crane, is that correct? Yes. Now, what is a spinning crane? Spinning crane, it's a uh, motel. It, and is from State Exhibit 4, is that a picture from their driveway? Correct. Is that a public or a private driveway? It's private. And from your recollection, the defendant was the defendant leaving out of the spinning crane? Uh, he may have. I know he was within the W area. Now, if you leave from the spinning from the spinning crane, we have to stop before entering onto Larson or the Yes. Now the defendant was turning from you said the defendant committed the driving impression on Larson and Pine Ridge. Correct. Where did you initiate where did you eventually pull the defendant over on? Uh, it was on Pine Ridge, right by 75. 
So when you pull the thing over, we're on my right. Yeah, it's on. Now, is there a stop sign coming from Pine Ridge onto Larson? No. And Larson Avenue, or Larson dead ends into the Spanish Correct. Correct. Um, Yes. Cross examination, Mr. Khalil? Yes. It's not evidence. Uh, I just want to be uh, so that the witness can interact with the map. Um, this is, uh, Ms. Uh, Deputy Capone, is this uh, an accurate description, accurate, uh, description of the area? Mr. Ashby, uh, any objection or do you need to move? I admit, I'm not seeing this map that uh, defense counsel is. This is a live um, feed from Google Maps. Any objection? Uh, no, no. And so, Deputy Piccoli, um just to back up a little bit, uh, how familiar are you with this area? Not really at all. Okay, all right. And so, in your booking report, um, um, which intersection did you say that you saw Mr. Morris come out of? Well, to be fair, I, I'm having a hard time reading this map. I'm not, okay. I'm not familiar, too familiar with the area, uh, but it was it was the Dudley Drive area. Okay, so would it would it be just like east, east and west? I, I couldn't give you specifics on that. Okay, looking at this map, is Dudley depicted east and west? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, where's Larson Way? Uh, it's like right there. Hey, you're on uh, permission to have the witness step down and point to Larson Way? Yes, you may step down, officer. <laughs> and so where's okay. Larson Way? Okay. And where's Pine Ridge? Okay. And where's Dudley? Looks like it's right here. So. Okay. So in your book and report, you stated that he had ran a stop sign on Dudley. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and it's your testimony today that he actually ran the Larson Way stop sign. Correct. And where would that stop sign be? Uh, right in front of Pine Ridge. Okay, and where's Pine Ridge? It's up here. Okay, all right. Um, you can ask me. Thank you. What time did you make this stop? Uh, 21 to 43 hours approximately. Okay, do you remember where the defendant's vehicle was? In regards to what road was he on? When he committed Larson. He was on Larson. Okay. Well, when he committed the fraction, correct. Okay. All right. And he failed to stop at a stop sign? Yes. Now, you would reference Spinnaker Inn at a point. Do you know if he was ever in the Spinnaker Inn at any time? I know he was in the Dudley area, which I know is by Spinnaker. Okay. And where did he eventually come to a stop? Uh, Pine Ridge by 75. Now, do you remember taking a deposition in this case? I do. And that deposition was on July 7th of 2020? Yes. And in that deposition, obviously you're sworn to tell the truth, the whole truth? Yes. Now, we're talking about the intersections that was ran. Um, and where the stop signs were located. Mm -hmm. Now, I even have shown you a map. Do you recall that? Uh, no. Okay. So, 
this is the map that I had showed you. It's very similar to, to that one on July 7th. Does it recall if you recall at all? No. No? Okay. I had also shown you a panoramic of this exact intersection. Does this, you recall seeing this? Uh, I recognize it from this. Okay, all right. So you do remember seeing a panoramic view then? Yeah. Okay. Now, When you took that deposition, you were trying to answer those questions as fairly accurate as possible. Correct. And on page three, line 19 through 26, I'll just go ahead and read those. It said, okay, so I'm going to show you a map here. Answer, okay. Question, if you could please point or just mark on the map uh, where you unsaw the defendants and where you were. Oh, I don't remember that. I don't know exactly. I was more positioned with someone in this place. And lines on page four, 15 through 21, you said, um, okay, uh, I'm sorry, the question was, he was leaving Spender in? I don't recall. Question, you don't know if he was actually leaving Spender in? or out on the road? Well, in fact, I know he was on W Drive. Is that correct? Objection on our improper impeachment, which is not sustained with any completely statement you made. Objection sustained. Would you admit that in your deposition, you had said that it was W Drive? Uh, yes, so yes. And, it, and you said it was for a fact, that it would be stopped, that he ran the stop sign on the other drive. Well, during the time, I didn't really know the intersections, but yes, so I did see Okay, all right. So, is it your testimony today that you clearly and accurately remember the days of that stop? Yes. And so, again, during your deposition, you had stated on page three, 23, in regards to marking the map where you were, I don't exactly know where I was more positioned so in this area. Sustained. You wrote a booking report in this case? Correct. And what day did you write that booking report? Uh, February 12, 2019. Was that the day of the arrest? Yes. And is it fair to say that you re recall the event better on that day than you do today? Yeah. No other question. Redirect. Redirect. react react extensively about the discrepancy between your booking report and the uh, testimony of today. Did you learn more about the names of the intersections um, between the date of the booking report and deposition today? Yes. And based on that and your review of what you know of where the infraction took place, did that alter your understanding of the name of the street is where these infractions are placed? Correct. Where did the infraction take place? Larson in Pine Ridge. Stop sign. Which street in Pine Ridge? Uh, Larson. Larson. Yes. Going back just a little bit. Larson, the Dudley and Pine Ridge, they run uh, parallel to each other. Is that correct? Correct. Sure. They're fairly close to one another? Yes. Larson, a very long street? Yes. So, fair to say that, what is on Larson? What, what, is there any landmarks on Larson that you're aware of? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have Shell and uh, Big Burger King. And from your recollection, when the defendant ran a stop sign, where was he located between? Uh, those two buildings. Now, on Dudley, 
What is on Dudley that the lamb are on Dudley? Ah, oh, it's vinegar. Now, the, is there a hurricane in the shell on Dudley? Uh, no, I just want more to. No further questions, Your Honor. Anything else for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. Well, okay. one, one quick question. When you turned on to Pine Bridge, which way was it on? East or west? I have to say, what was the question again, uh, Council? When he ran a stop sign on Larson Way when he turned on Pine Ridge, was he going east or west? And the objection? Outside the scope of the river. Objection overruled. You may answer. Uh, I don't know. East and west. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Ashton? Does the witness need to remain for either side? Not for the state. No, you are. Officer, you're free to remain or leave as you wish. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, additional state evidence? State Any uh, defense evidence? Yes, Your Honor. At, at this time, we would like to call Chris E. Uh, Chris e. Shirley. Okay, if she can be summoned, please. What's the name again? Chris E. Shirley. Okay. Uh, Shirley, S H I L E Y. Can you face the clerk and read your right hand this morning? Yeah. Do you sound the smart term? Do you have the future? Do you have the future? Do you have the future? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please have a seat in the book. It's called Future Step. Hello, Ms. Shirley. Welcome. Hi. Please be seated. Thank you for your patience waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Khalil, when you're ready. Uh, do you, you need the podium move, Mr. Ashby? No, fine. Good afternoon. Hi. Could you please state your name? Christy Shirley. And do you remember the night of February 12, 2019? Yeah. Okay. And uh, was it dark that night? Yeah. Um, was your vehicle stopped by the police at all? Excuse me? Was your vehicle stopped by the police? Yeah. And um, could you tell us about what happened? Why was your vehicle stopped? Um, we were going into, um, I guess we we're making a U-turn into this motel area. And um, we made the U-turn and we came back out. And that's when um, the police pulled us over. Okay. Now, were you on, so if I could just use this map, um, this is the Spinnaker Inn down here. Mm -hmm. This is Dudley Drive. This is Larson Way, and this is Pine Ridge. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what road you were on? When we got pulled over? No, um, when you were making the U-turn. We were making the U-turn in the, um, the complex. Okay. In, the, um, in that motel area. So we actually went in there and then we just turned around and went up. Were you in the Spinnaker in that? Yeah. Okay. And were you heading out to Pine Ridge? Yes. We, okay. were, we just went in there and we turned around and then we were both heading back. Uh, could you explain a little bit better? What do you mean? Um, so when you were making a U-turn, did you make it out on the road or did you make it in the complex of Spencer? In the complex at the Spencer. Okay, and then after you made that U-turn, where did you guys go? We went to Pine Ridge Road. Okay, so what stop sign was ran at the point of, of the infraction? There was no stop sign that was ran. Okay, and what, could you explain um, where that stop sign was located? Well, we got pulled over on Pine Ridge Road. Okay. Which is ways from the hotel. And um, there's no stop sign right there. Right where? Right at Pine Ridge. There's no stop sign on no. Pine Ridge? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, do you know if there's a stop sign at Spinnaker Inn? Um, yes. There is a stop there's sign. There's a stop sign somewhere, but it's not on Pine Ridge. Okay. 
So the basis for the stop, which which stop sign was ran, according to you? There was no stop sign that was ran. We stopped, and then we went to Pine Ridge. There must have been something going on at the Spinnaker Inn because there was police there, and there was another guy on the walkie. They were probably doing some kind of raid or something, and then followed us out, okay. thinking we were part of it or something. And but there was no stop sign that was ran. Okay. All right. Did you see the police officers before they turned their lights on? No. Oh. Um, did you see the officers when they initially turned their lights on? Did I see them when they turned on their lights? Yeah, so, so you're in the car, the officers turned their lights on. Did you see when they initially turned their lights on? When we were on Pine Ridge Road. Okay, so you were on Pine Ridge Road when you saw the officers. Yes, and we stopped right before the um, I-75 sign. Okay. No further on questions. On the right hand side. No further questions. Cross-examination. Brief the arm, that person, that person. Yes. So you stay to clear one. Can I first witness you? Yes. Ma'am, I'm showing you state's exhibit one. Do you recognize me? Is this a newer picture? Oh. Is where I don't know where this is. You don't recognize the state's exhibit one? Is that Pine Ridge? That is State Exhibit One is showing the intersection of Pine Ridge and Larson. Do you not recognize it? Yeah, no, I I see. There you was see, no stop sign there though. You, you, you said it's your testimony today there's there was a stop sign on Pine Ridge and Larson. I don't remember a stop sign. It was further back near the hotel. No further questions, John. Anything else? No, you are. Does the witness need to remain for either side? No, you are. Thank you. Have a good day. You're free to leave if you wish or remain as you wish. Any additional defense evidence? No, Your Honor. Any state rebuttal evidence? Oh, no, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. We would like to call Mr. Morris, but he's not here. Um, so we would not press at this time. When do you propose to call him? Um, <laughs> Your Honor, tomorrow if we can address it? I don't think so. Um, it's set, set for today. There's been no excuse provided for his non-attendance. This is the time to be set for hearing, and uh, the evidence will close today if, he, if there's nothing else to be presented. Okay. Um, yes, Your Honor, we can proceed to argument. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, is the moving party, uh, Mr. Khalil? Uh, Your Honor. Um... Can I see the exhibits, Madam Clerk? Thank you. Well, I guess the first issue is which stop sign that he ran. Um, the defense was going to put on evidence that he ran the Dudley intersection, as indicated by the book report and deposition of uh, uh, the deputy. Um, that would be the first issue. Did he run the Dudley stop sign or did he run the Larson and Pinebridge stop sign? The second issue would then be to interpret the statutes. Did, was he required to stop at that point? And in the defense's motion, we referenced statute 316.123, the right of way at an intersection may be indicated by stop sign yield signs or authorized in section 316.006. That statute is then going to the county's jurisdiction over all of the city or the county streets and highways and their ability to place and maintain traffic control devices there is no stop sign in when you're exiting dudley drop if the court is to take a position that he in fact ran the dudley uh the exiting of spinnaker in onto larson way in that intersection there is no stop sign and when you're coming into Spinnaker Inn, as the deputy had indicated, there's also no stop sign. Mr. Ashby had indicated that it's a, a dead end, but the defense's argument is to facilitate the economy of Spinnaker Inn. Traffic can come in freely and traffic can leave 
Britain. In those uh, state exhibits, it does show a speed bump. And in the when you're approaching a speed bump, the when you're driving, it's to slow down, not to stop. And if you look closely at those photos, one of the speed bumps is yellow. Um, it looks like the incoming speed bump, indicating that they had replaced it. And when they had replaced that speed bump, they had never added in a stop sign. When someone is maintaining that road, they never notice that there's a stop sign missing if the county wanted to put it in. Also, on the intersection of Dudley, there appears to be a stop sign that is temporary. It doesn't have a pole and a sign attached to the top, but instead it's on it's on the ground and it, it, it kind of has a makeshift stand indicating that the county realized that there's no stop sign on the intersection of Dudley and Larson Way. And so they had put a stop sign there because they realized they made a mistake. Interestingly enough, they never added a temporary stop sign to Dudley and Larson Way because they had wanted to facilitate the economy of spending their day. Um, based on all the factors, uh, we would ask the courts to grant the motion to dismiss. Oh, uh, grant the motion to suppress comment. Mr. Ash. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to report to the case call for your review. Your Honor, statement of action for you to deny the defense motion to suppress the case for, um, because the stop of this case was a lawful traffic stop. Um, starting first with, obviously, the officer specified the state's exhibits one through four. You see a multitude of stop signs. Specifically, starting with state's exhibit one, we see that there is a stop sign on Pine Ridge and Larson Way. The uh, officer testified that the traffic infraction occurred on Pine Ridge and Larson Way, and that the defendant he did continue committed that sorry the infraction, and then the officer stopped him on Pine Ridge. That testimony has been consistent that the update was stopped on Pine Ridge on his way here to the I 75 uh, on the And the officer also addressed the issue of the Larson does the confusion. Um, it's not an area that he controls frequently, and he missed the name um, for the traffic infraction, namely that the traffic infraction occurred on Larson and Pine Ridge, not Mark, not Dudley and Larson, as he stated in the report. He questioned extensively on that, and he explained it was simply a, a scrivener's error and the mistake on his part that he missed the correct street, the inter correct intersection for which the infraction took place. He corrected that and, 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 and testified as such. So what we are left with is the testimony here today is that the defendant ran a stop sign and got the other way to respond. Starting with 316.123, um, subsection 2A, except when directed to proceed by a police officer or traffic control signal, every driver of a vehicle approaching a stop intersection indicated by a stop sign shall stop at a clearly marked stop line, but if none, before entering the crosswalk on the near side of the intersection, or if none, then at the point nearest the intersection roadway where the driver is a vehicle approaching traffic on the intersection roadway before entering the intersection. After having stopped, the driver shall yield the right of way to any vehicle which has entered the intersection from another highway or which is approaching so closely on said highway as to constitute an immediate hazard during the time when the driver is moving across or within the intersection. So, despite the defense's argument about the county's facilitation, I, I guess, of Spirit Grin, the temporary or permanent nature of the stop sign, at the end of the day, if there's a stop sign, Drivers shall stop. It's not a, up to the driver or the vehicle to determine what stop, stop sign they want to stop at, what stop sign they will stop at. They have to stop at a stop sign, no matter where it's placed, whether it's on Dudley, Larson, Pine Ridge, I 75, the stop sign, you have to stop. Your Honor, defense uh, brought up the spit of in and I went into this test testimony about if the defendant left the spinner carrying and specifically that gave the dead end, dead end Larson way, dead end and into the spinner brain. In 316.125, vehicle entering highway from private roadway or driveway or emerging from an alley, driveway or building. Subsection two, 
Six, the driver of a vehicle emerging from an alley, building, private road, or driveway within a business or residence district shall stop the vehicle immediately prior to driving onto a sidewalk or onto the sidewalk area extending across the alley, building, entrance, road, or driveway. Or in the event there is no sidewalk area, shall stop at the point nearest the street to be entered where the driver has a view of approaching traffic thereon and shall yield all vehicles and pedestrians which are so close thereto as to constitute an immediate hazard. This is as the defendant, even if the, despite there being no stop sign on uh, leaving the Smith Marine, pursuant to Supporter Statute 316.125, the defendant has to stop before entering when leaving the Smith Marine, a private driveway, before entering the public roadway of W Drive or Washington Way. Your Honor, however, again, as noted, the author's testimony today is that the defendant committed a traffic infraction on Larson, on Larson Way and Pine Bridge. He ran that stop sign as it is shown in State Exhibit 1 on Larson Way and Pine Ridge. As you see in State Exhibit 4, that the speaker in is a private residence. They have a speed bump, they have a sign posted showing that it is a business. It is specifically a hotel. And that the area with the roadway is at that point ends, most notably by two large yellow speed bumps. And state exhibits two and three, you see the stop sign on the there. In any way or form, the defendant had to stop the stop sign. It did not matter. One moment, uh, Officer Harrison, it's been several times now that this lady has been heard interrupting the proceedings. So she needs to be removed until she's ready to be called. It's being, she's being disruptive. First. Sorry, Mr. Ashby, we'll wait for Zoom. It's been more than once. All right, go ahead, Mr. Ashby. Thank you. Again, so your know, um, state, state also included um, based on the how the motion was written, the defense may go into a different direction as far as their uh, questioning. This state did include how we state 696, summer 7, 757. Um, that is a Florida Supreme Court case stating that the point for the objective basis um, should the court be aware. Um, that we, when applying the objective test, generally the only determination to be made is whether probable cause existed for the stop in question. Um, the state put to the court that there is probable cause um, that the defendant ran a stop sign and the officer observed that. Now, the state also included State v. Davidson. Um, that's merely, uh, that's in the court, that is included in the court's packet. The court um, largely probably should call that as not proven. Again, in anticipation of where I believe the defense was going to go with the questioning. Uh, that is more so saying that Crooks is on the live on, but uh, that obviously didn't come up in this case. Um, but Your Honor, for the reason stated in the evidence presented, um, the, state, the state is a position that the court should deny the defense's motion to suppress. The officer clearly indicated the defendant ran the stop sign at Larson and Pine Ridge. I think we saw he made an error as the name of the street where the intersection the traffic practice took place, and he admitted as such on stand, which goes to his truth and veracity when he can admit his, his errors. However, it is not an error that he ran a stop sign at Larson and High Bridge, and for that reason, you're on the state of action, you did not defend the motion because there was a lawful traffic stop and there was a, big, a lawful basis for the traffic stop. Mr. Khalil, any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. In Florida Statute 316.123, it states that every driver of a vehicle approaching a stop intersection indicated by a stop sign shall stop at a clearly marked stop line. There's three elements there. Um, approaching the stop intersection, we would have to assume that this Dudley and Larson Way intersection is a stop intersection indicated by a stop sign. There's no stop sign there and clearly marked by a stop line. But if none, that's the that, that, that's the, the the critical words. But if none, does that refer to the entire statement or just the stop sign? And it's the defense's position that it only refers to. Uh, I mean, it, it refers to all three of those elements instead of 
just is there a stop sign there, but if none, then this section would apply. The defense would concede that section 316.125 does apply, where this is the stop sign section. Where if you're entering, if you're exiting a private road or driveway within a business, then the vehicle shall stop. It then goes on to say, but if not, then you have to stop at the either the sidewalk, but if none, at the nearest to the street to be entered where the driver has a view approaching the oncoming traffic. So we can see that that one would apply. However, it's an indirect conflict with section 316.006, where we go into that jurisdiction again. The county has the right to maintain and control traffic. They have the right to place traffic control devices where they wish. Then it becomes a statutory interpretation at that point. And because this statute is a higher statute, the defense would argue that this one should apply instead of the later statute, 316.125. All right, thank you. The evidence presented is as follows. Uh, Corporal Matthew Piccoli, the uh, stopping and arresting officer in this case, seven-year veteran of the sheriff's office, testified that while on duty, he encountered uh, the defendant, Mr. Morris, and his passenger, who was Mrs. Shirley. Uh, he, officer Piccoli said he uh, stopped the vehicle for a stop sign violation at an intersection. The state then has introduced into evidence four photographs of the area, which I believe have been taken subsequent to the events in question. Yes, sir. Oh, there are, there are, there are dates at the bottom. December 18. Well, there appear to be different dates on here. December 18 and June of 16, the... Hang on, if I can help. Um, the defense will concede that those, that's a fair and accurate representation um, of the intersection. We were going to introduce the same photos. Of all of the intersections? Y yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So those are the state's uh, exhibits. Uh, Officer, as I understood Officer Piccoli's testimony, he said that the four wheels of the vehicle did not come to a complete stop. He testified there was an error in the report as to the streets involved. Uh, he clarified that the traffic violation of failing to stop occurred at Larson and Pine Ridge. The probable cause affidavit filed in this case indicates that it occurred at on Dudley Drive. On cross-examination, uh, the officer was asked about this contradiction. He said he was not familiar with the area. Uh, he was firm in his position correcting himself that it actually occurred at uh, Larson and Pine Ridge. He says that the actual stop uh, with emergency lights occurred on Pine Ridge near I-75. Officer was confronted by Mr. Khalil on cross-examination with uh, some of his testimony at a prior deposition. The officer did admit some lack of recall. Uh, he did admit that at the deposition, he described the violation occurring at Dudley Drive. He went on to further testify that he recalls the stop today, that he wrote the probable cause affidavit uh, on or about the date of arrest. On redirect, uh, Mr. Ashby asked the officer about this contradiction between the probable cause affidavit, the deposition, his testimony here in court today. He said that uh, subsequent to the deposition, he had learned the names of the intersections more thoroughly and that he recalled certain landmarks near where the violation occurred. Uh, the defense presented Ms. Shirley. Uh, she uh, was one of the, path, the front seat passenger according to the probable cause affidavit at the time of the stop. Ms. Shirley says she recalls the events. She recalls a U-turn into the Spinnaker Motel coming back out 
and was stopped thereafter after they had emerged from there. Ms. Shirley was uh, definite in her comment that there had been no stop sign violations. On cross examination, well, she said she did not see the police before the emergency lights were activated, and that occurred while on Pine Ridge. On cross examination, Ms. Shirley stated that uh, the Pine Ridge and Larson, she did not recognize that photograph initially, uh, but stated after she was explained what had been depicted by the state, she, uh, as my understanding, insisted that there was no stop sign at least uh, at the time of the events. Uh, counsel, does that uh, does the court's recollection uh, conflict with any of the counsel's recollection of the evidence? Yes. Okay. Essentially, there is a credibility issue here. Uh, the court, as uh, do juries, considers how the witnesses testified, what they said, and how it appears to line up with the totality of the known evidence presented so far. Uh, Ms. Shirley has some interest in this case, although she is not charged. She was apparently associated with uh, Mr. Morris in some degree. Uh, the officer admitted to his lack of recollection. Uh, he says that after further examining the intersections that uh, he doesn't recall the events and that the violation occurred at the Larson Way and Pine Ridge location. Other than the officer's general interest in law enforcement, there's been no specific motive identified for this case. While this officer would either uh, would, would not be uh, telling the truth in this situation. Uh, at this point, uh, the officer has less interest in the matter uh, than the defendant or the person associated with him. And the officer uh, did say he had corrected his recall. There is clearly uh, stop signs in the area, and in particular at Pine Ridge and uh, Larson. Uh, Ms. Shirley's testimony is diminished slightly by the fact that even when shown the image of Larson Way and Pine Ridge, she still disputed that there was no stop sign at that location. So uh, the credibility nod goes to the officer. The court finds it based on the credible testimony from the officer. There was a lawful stop. The motion is denied. Any other clarifications, counsel? All right. We'll see uh, the defense and Mr. Morris then tomorrow at uh, pre-trial conference. Have you waived uh, his appearance in writing on that, Mr. Khalil? No, I'm not All right. I'm hoping here, but All right, if you could uh, either find out the circumstances of his non-attendance today, uh, but uh, see if you can procure his attendance tomorrow, or find out if there's something preventing him from attending that's a legitimate excuse, I would entertain that. Thank you, All right. Uh, Mr. Madam Clerk, do you need a written order for the purposes of the hearing? No, All right. They might be helpful, Mr. Ashby, if you would just do a generic order just indicating that the motion was heard and denied and that the reasons set forth in the court smart recording of the oral ruling with, with findings. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. yes. And uh, Officer Harrison, do we know if the, or Mr. Lucarelli is the lady that was asked to leave? Is she part of your case? No, I believe she's part of the. Uh, the case. Oh, the Diamante Mole case. All right. Yes. Then uh, Mr. Samato and uh, co-counsel. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sometimes the names overwhelm me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's take a short break. If you'll let uh, Mr. Khalil and Mr. Samato and Ms. Horowitz, you'll let me know when you're all set to go, and then uh, the person can return to me in in the courtroom. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Free, 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 free. Oh, I'm sorry. You do have the golf matter. I forgot. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just going to let you know that that was for Mr. Cleo's the case, the golf matter. Uh, the, the case that Mr. Cleo was representing. That's Mrs. Um, uh, Taylor. Okay, so oh, she's not on the DMO. She's not on that. On that. Okay. Oh, okay. Are we ready to address golf now? Yes. Or let's address golf then before the break, and then we'll focus on DMO. Okay. I'm going to set up either way.
Que droga, eu estou aqui no meu Are we able to address both, Ms. Mason? All right. Ladies, can you please put your mask up over your nose? Thank you. All right, we'll uh, resume with the golf cases now. And which is the case we're call, calling both of them or just yes. one? Here, our first one would like to call 19 CF 11. All right, now Ms. Goff is now present. So which case is being called first, the plea? Yes, sir. And which number is that? Okay. And Mr. Uh, Lucarelli, you represent her on the plea agreement? Yes, sir. All right. There are no competency issues affecting the entry of the plea? No, sir. All right. And Ms. Goff, please, you can remain seated. Just raise your right hand and be sworn. Yes, I'm Thank you. May I lower your hand. Please answer the state's questions. Well, first, let me find out what the terms are. Your Honor, it will be an adjudication of guilt. Your Honor, it will be an adjudication of guilt. Nine months in jail with credit for time served, followed by 24 months of state probation. There will be a substance abuse evaluation, follow all recommendations. The defendant will be subject to random drug and alcohol testing at her expense. The standard no alcohol provision. Court costs, $100 cost of prosecution. $368 cost of investigation to the Colorado County Sheriff's Office. Public defender, no, no charges on this case. Any, uh, Madam Clerk, 100 prosecution, what are the court costs? Uh, we'll okay. Mr. Lucarelli, any objection or request for hearing any monetary amounts? We are. Okay. Any clarifications on the plea agreement from the defense? No, sir. Uh, Ms. Goff, do you understand and accept these terms? Mr. Lucarelli, are we able to go forward at this time? She seems to be a little confused, John. Um, yeah, She's insisting that there, be, that there was a time where it was a six month plea offer. I don't think there was There was never a six month plea offer. There was a jail offer and there was a prison offer. Yeah. And I think it was the, the thing that the confusion is that she has a lot more credit in this case that I'm representing her on than she is here. You closer to getting out of my case than she wouldn't accept the case. That was, that was, we were trying to get the state to 
he would reduce it to six months, but if that was not happening, he would just come down at six months. So at this point, uh, what does the defense wish to do? Is the state's plea offer being revoked if not accepted today? On the 21 CF 426, yes. And on that case alone, Your Honor, I do have the, the sentence. She scores a minimum of 18 months in prison on that case alone. So, Mr. Lucarelli, the defendant does not seem ready to go forward. Uh, do you want to take a recess at this time? Let me talk to you. Just to make sure you're going to finish this. All right. Let me uh, take a short recess, come back, and then let me know if you wish to go forward or not. Is the defense seeking to go forward either way on the motion to lift no contact? Yes. Or are they interlocked? It, it may be a global resolution depending on how the conversation goes, but I don't All right. the intent to go forward with the motion. All right, we'll uh, take a five to ten minute recess and see where we are. All rise, court is in recess. Sorry, okay. Sorry, I know we submitted the order for the uh, most surprising journey. Right, I signed it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
He looked at me. I don't even think he
you making your own videos? I do. I have nothing else to do. I'm going to put a tiny flag in or something. I'm going to call it race flag. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All rise. Calling County Circuit Court is back in session. Welcome back. Ready to resume, Mr. Crowley? Yes, sir. All right, let's have Ms. Goff join us. Thank you. Please be seated. Yeah, tell me again. If uh, there's another violation, she will need to be escorted out. So you got a chance to confirm some growing? She understands, Judge, that her confusion was that, and Judge, when you asked earlier if I think there's any compensation, I don't think there's a compensation, but she does suffer from severe anxiety when she gets going, it's hard for her to clearly remember things. And she was confused about the, the amount of time she had left, and she thought that she was almost done, and that's sure where she think she came out with six months. Okay, you've clarified everything now? She understands. All right. You know, we had a, we had a, an attempt at another resolution to, to wrap up both cases with that bill. Okay. So we're going to take care of 19 CF 1102. Two All right, Ms. Goff has returned after speaking in private with Mr. Lucarelli. And uh, Mr. Lucarelli, how does the defense wish to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. We're going to enter a plea. Withdraw from that plea of criminal contest to the charges in case number 19 CF 1102. With the plea agreement plea previously announced? Yes, Your Honor. The other case is left unresolved? Correct. Any clarifications from the state? Um, no, Your Honor, I think the only thing that does need to be clarified is that although she's doing the minor mistake of following 24 months of state probation, that probation doesn't start until she's released from custody. So if she's still in custody on the other case, her probation is not going to run while she's in custody on the other case still. So that is, of course, uh, standard, Ms. Rubella. I just want to make sure that she's aware. You still have your probation when you get out. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ms. Goff, after speaking in private with Ms. Lucarelli, do you wish to accept these terms? Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, okay. Please raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you sign this card for us? We have to check the truth. The truth. The truth. The truth. The truth. Yes. Thank you. May I lower your hand? Please answer the state's questions. Would you say your full name and date of birth, please? Ron Van Goss, 1959. What the last four digits of your social security number? 5087. Have you ever been known by an alias or any other name? Uh, yeah. What in what what alias are they with that? Uh well Long was my main name. Long, L-O-N-G. Long, W-A-L-L. Long, okay. Uh, okay. So we asked with an American name. And that was with American. Have you ever been arrested under any of those names? Mm, no. No. Uh, where were you born? Key West, Florida. And how far did you go in school? 12th grade. Are you able to read, write, and understand the English language? I am. Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol today? I know. Are you prescribed any medication? I am. And have you, is that a medication you can take at night or do you take it during the daytime? Both. Okay. And have you taken, have you taken that medication as prescribed? Yes. And does that medication impact your ability to understand what's going on with that? No. Does it impact your ability to make decisions? No. And as we said here today, do you feel that you're thinking clearly and able to make a decision about your cases? I am. And are you suffering from any kind of mental condition or disorder? No. Do you understand why we're here today? Yeah. And case number 19 CF 1102, you're part of one count of introduction of contraband into a county det detention facility. It's a third degree felony, it's punishable by up to five years in state prison. To that charge, you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest. No contest. You understand by entering your plea today that you're waiving your right to a jury trial on that case. Yeah. And at that trial, you would have had the right to see and hear the state's witnesses testify and have your lawyer question them, the right to subpoena your own witnesses and submit evidence on your behalf. The right to testify or to remain silent, 
the right to make the state prove this charge beyond a reasonable doubt, and the right to have a jury determine whether you were guilty or innocent. Do you understand your way to those rights? Yes. Counsel, have you reserved any matters for appeal? No. Ms. Goff, do you understand that you're giving up your right to appeal anything other than whether this court has the jurisdiction to impose this sentence? Right. Right. Um, I'm showing you a plea of guilty on a contest form. Do you recognize this? Yeah. And it has your name and your case number here at the top. It's front and back, and there are two signatures here on the back. Mm -hmm. Are those your signatures? They are. Does one of those signatures indicate that you've read this form or that it's been explained to you and you understand all the rights contained in it? Yes, ma'am. Did you have the opportunity to review this form with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any questions about it? Yes, ma'am. I'm also showing you your score sheet. Uh, your score sheet shows that you have a total of 71.1 sentencing points. The maximum sentence you could receive on this charge is five years in state prison. Uh, the lowest permissible prison sentence on this charge is 32 months in prison. Do you understand the Do you agree that this court is after? Yeah. Okay. And while you score 32 months in prison, do you understand the state's offer in this case is to something much less than that? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, do you have, uh, has anyone forced you to, to get you, forced you or threatened you to get you to enter this plea? No. no. Are you entering this plea in your own free will? Yes. Um, do you feel that entering this plea is in your best interest? Yes. Are you satisfied with the advice and counsel of your attorney? I am. Has he done everything you asked to answer all of your questions? He has. Has he discussed this case with you in its entirety, including any possible defenses you may or may not have? He has. Counsel, have you reviewed all the discovery in this case with your client? Uh, Ms. Goff, is there anything about this case that you wanted the chance to review but you have not had an opportunity to review? No. Um, Your Honor, I'm not aware of any physical evidence that we tested for DNA. Counsel, do you agree? I agree. Ms. Goff, do you understand as a result of your plea today, there is no physical evidence in this case that would be tested for your DNA? Right. Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, okay, right, right. Do you understand that? Yeah, okay. Um, and do you also understand that uh, upon completion of your, your, uh, your jail sentence, that you're going to be placed on two years of probation? Right. And, you, and that probation is going to have certain terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. If you were to violate the terms of your, your probation, do you understand that the court could, uh, that you could be going back into custody and you could be sentenced up to the maximum five years in prison? You're right. right in that? Yes, ma'am. And Ms. Goff, I also just wanted to make it very clear um, that you do have a second case that's not resolved today, correct? Yes, And that case is 21 CF 426. Right. Do you understand? Can I have a moment, please? Yes. Thank you. 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 All right, ready to resume? Yes. All right, thank you. <laughs> Mason, uh, anything else to add? I missed all that. I really your attorney's gone over this with you. I want to make sure that it's clear for the record that because the other case is not resolving, do you understand that you do score a minimum of 18 months in prison on that case? Yes, ma'am. And that if, if you were to be found guilty on that case, uh, do you also understand that the court could then sentence you to, to a consecutive sentence, which means that it could run um, after this case? Do you yes. understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is that your decision to resolve only one of the cases today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you understand that if you are not a United States citizen, you may be subject to deportation or removal as a result of this plea? Yeah. And that if you were deported or removed as a result of this plea, it would not be a basis to withdraw your plea. Do you understand that? Do you what? No, I'm I understand. I just, it's something I have to tell her. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted there. I was throwing it with you. Okay. Um, do, you, do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. I do. Um, counsel, do you stipulate that the court may rely on the court file and the affidavits contained there in the established factual basis of venue? Yes, and that venue is proper in Clark County, Florida? Yes. Ms. Goff, also, do you understand that um, if the offense to which you were pleading was sexually violent or sexually motivated, or if you had previously been convicted of such an offense, this plea may subject you to the involuntary civil commitment as a sexually violent predator upon completion of your sentence? I understand that word. Yeah, 
right. But yeah, yes, I understand that. Now, at this time, the state would ask the court to take judicial notice of the court file in the case number 19 CF 1102, which I'm going to the court. I'm going to the court for and this portion. Mr. Lucarelli, any other defense comments or requests? No, Your Honor. Just the amount of time she's got in. Okay. Have you calculated that? 162 days, Judge. How much? 162, and I reviewed that with the administration. And that's based on jail information? Yes, Your Honor. That's based on, on, on the uh, okay. May 3rd request. Uh, she had 127 days, and since that day, we come to the total was uh, 162. Does the state have any objection to that credit being assigned at this time? No, Your Honor. So uh, that will be granted. Mm -hmm. And noted on the judgment and sentence based on the plea agreement, plea colloquy, the plea of no contest on this case only, the arrest affidavit facts in support thereof, court accepts the plea agreement as agreed adjudication of guilt, nine months, Kyler County Jail, credit all time served at a minimum 162 days to be followed by immediate reporting in Kyler County for supervision for 24 months. Any need to transfer supervision, Mr. Uh, Lugrelli? I don't believe so, Your Honor. Conditions as announced, the substance abuse evaluation and follow recommendations, random testing, no alcohol provisions, monetary amounts as previously described and not objected to or all approved, additional? She, she, she wants to be sure that, that there were, there's no objection to early termination if she qualifies later on. State have any comment? Uh, Your Honor, state has. So there's no agreement on early termination that Ms. Goff may request early termination upon successful completion of conditions and uh, typically at the halfway point, although that is not fixed uh, completely. All right, so this case is resolved. Mr. Khalil on the other case, uh, that's been set for case management or do we need to set a date on that? I, I believe it's already set. And you wish to address the no contact order motion at this time? If we have time, Your Honor, yes. We can address it. Uh, is the state objecting to the motion on no contact? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And uh, what case number is that, Mr. Khalil? 21 CF 426. All right. Is there any evidence to be presented? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, we'd like to call Glenda Taylor. Ms. Taylor can come up, please. Ms. Taylor, step right this way, please. I just heard Ms. Taylor. If you face the court, raise your right hand to be sworn in. We're good right here. <laughs> if you saw me swear, or if you have been to check, you have to tell me the truth, the whole truth is not the truth. Okay. Ms. Taylor, would you please step in the middle of the spot? I'll hold your first step. That was good. Right here. All right, hello, Ms. Taylor. Mr. Khalil, you may question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, please state your name. Glenda Taylor. And you were listed as a victim in this case, is that right? Yes. And um, what happened on, on the night of March 12th of this year? It wasn't the night. But, um, what happened is I was about Rhonda and I got into a little argument about something and she attempted, she didn't hit me, but she attempted to. And it scared me and I called the police. Okay. Did she ever grab you in any way? No. Did she ever push you? No. Um, did she ever cause you any bleeding that night? Any what? Bleeding? No. Um, are you fearful of Rhonda? Are you fearful? No, oh, right. absolutely not, no. Do you uh, require her assistance in any way? Yes. And could you explain what that assistance is? Well, she helps me with my house, my dog, my, my everything. She's very intelligent and does a great job helping me out. Would you like to have contact with Rhonda Gall? Yes. Is anyone pressuring you to be here today? No. Is anyone pressuring you to lift the no contact order? No. Uh, uh, are you here of your free choice? Yes. Are you aware that if the no contact order is lifted, you can always have it reimposed? Yes. 
if something were to happen, would you would you would you call nine one one? Yeah. No further questions. Any state questions? Yes. Ms. Um, Taylor, um, on the he testified today that there was never any contact, uh, physical contact with your daughter on the on the evening of this incident. Is that correct? There was never what? Any physical contact? I believe he testified that she never hit you. She never pushed you. There was never any bleeding cause. None of those things. But she there was contact. She grabbed my hands. Okay. Um, there's no uh, bleeding or bruising. Or... And do you recall um, when, when the when law enforcement showed up? Did you give them? A, did you recall giving them a statement? Yes. And in that statement, um, you told law enforcement that um, your daughter did grab the body on. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. And she tore your skin. Isn't that correct? Um, a little bit. Yeah. Your Honor, the state has no other questions. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor. How did, um, did, were you ever injured by uh, your dog? Yes. No objection, Your Honor. This is outside of scope. Uh, it has to do with the source of the injury objections overall. Could you please answer this question? Yes, I have. Okay. And which arm did you sustain that injury? Um, left. Your left hand? Mm -hmm. All right. And which arm did Rhonda grab? Left. The left? Okay. I'm left handed, so I'm always out front with this. No further questions, Your Honor. Anything else from the state? No. Hey, thank you, Ms. Taylor. We step down. What's your step, please? Any additional defense evidence? No, Your Honor. Any state evidence? No, Your Honor. Arguments of counsel beginning with Mr. Khalil. Your Honor, uh, Ms. Taylor indicated that she does need her daughter. Uh, she's here for free will. Um, the, the incident, while she did admit that she did grab her, um, it's a little bit inconsistent in terms of the questions that I had asked her. She said that she wasn't pushed or hit. Um, and at this time, we'd ask her the court to lift the no contact order. State comments? You know, the state is concerned about um, about this particular incident, um, especially, um, and then would also make the argument that Ms. Taylor didn't appear to be very truthful um, to with the state's questions, Judge. Um, she initially claimed that there was no contact, that she said that there was no touching, there was no hitting, there was no pushing, there was no pleading. However, when the state did question her and confronted her with her own statement that she needs the law enforcement, then she admitted that um, the defendant did grab her and did uh, tear her skin. Um, the whole thing about the dog judge, um, honestly, that's not even the statement that she gave to law enforcement, so I'm not quite sure why that was even brought up. Um, the statement that to law enforcement was that she was grabbed, um, that she was drunk, that she, grabbed, that she was grabbed, um, and that her skin was torn. The state has serious concerns about tampering with this particular witness. Um, we would ask that the um, that this case uh, that that motion be denied. Any rebuttal? No, Your Honor. There is uh, some reasons to question the credibility of the testimony I've heard. The dog uh, involvement in this, and the dog is not charged with anything, but uh, the dog mentioned was from, allegedly from the defendant. Uh, it looks to me like Ms. Taylor is conflicted in this situation based on the way she testified, both what I've observed as well as what she has stated. Uh, the injuries in this case are de minimis. Uh, the incident, uh, never to understate any incident that is domestic related, but it is not on the aggravated end of the scale. Uh, is there any history? history uh ms mason uh with this alleged victim uh, that the state is aware of with this defendant um Your Honor, the state is not aware um of any history with this between this defendant and this victim the defendant does have significant criminal history um however i don't um I, i'm not aware i have not had the opportunity or did not check to see if mm -hmm. any of the 
previous criminal history um, involved this particular victim. Okay, and looking at the score sheet for the other case for Ms. Goff, it does not show any uh, violent history other than the only one that would be a stretch would be a burglar of a dwelling occupied, but that's not accompanied by any battery or otherwise. The rest are controlled substance and assorted uh, charges that are not violent. Uh, there does appear to be a need to have support for Ms. Goff at the home. And uh, Ms. Taylor does appear to be here of her free will. Uh, Ms. Taylor, you do not wish to have any restrictions on contact. Is that right, Ms. Taylor? Do you want to have unrestricted contact? Yes. So at this time, the court will grant the wishes of Ms. Taylor and allow for there to be unrestricted contact from this point forward uh, for the reasons I've uh, commented about earlier. Thank Motion you. is granted. Yes, All right, Mr. Simano, after that, uh, Ms. Horowitz, after that uh, meticulous effort to set up our connection, <laughs> we've uh, apparently reobtained it. <laughs> I'm impressed how quickly you recovered and uh, reconnected. <laughs> Mr. Jolly, can you hear us? Can you hear us? We can hear you. Okay. You are, uh, I'll submit the order to you of the meeting that just left. So. All right. I'll submit it to the office. Okay. Can you hear us, Mr. Jolly? Can you hear us? Yes. All right. We'll wait just a moment to finish the other case. All right, Ms. Taylor, the uh, motion was granted. That case is finished now. Have a good day. Sign in print form. And next we have State B. Diamante Mole. And uh, the parties are all present. I'll go ahead, beginning with the defense, to announce the appearances. Uh, William and his mole is present. The state. Okay. And uh, remotely connected to Mr. Samato and Ms. Horowitz. This is Mr. Jolly, who is the victim in this case, that indicates that he cannot hear us, but we can hear him. Okay. Uh, is there any way we can improve the situation? Um, working on that. So. All right. I'll wait just a moment and see how we do. Let me uh, wait till they're finished connecting. We'll address that. A preliminary matter of counsel, and this is uh, the case numbers are 17 CF 778 and 779. A uh, preliminary matter for the state, Mr. Levy has asked if the, the gentleman that is here on behalf of the defense uh, needs, can he remain or is, under the rule, are you asking him to wait outside? Yeah. I just think the rule is over. He's not. Nobody else has to. We're going to be done with the yeah, I'm not going to be So no issue. So he can remain. Okay. Welcome, sir. And uh, the gentleman is present, though, Mr. Mall. Oh, I'm sorry, you're referring to someone else. My witness is Mall, correct? Yeah, All right. I'm sorry, maybe I should have clarified. <laughs> While this was going on, I was going to ask if it was done by a witness. But now it's on. Yeah, now it's on. 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 Now it's
if we could recap either side uh, where we are. Mr. Jolly, can you hear the court at this time? Yeah, can you hear us adequately? Uh, not quite. Okay, we, need, we want to make sure you can hear adequately, so let me see if they can play with the connection a little bit more. Right. Mr. Jolly, is there any improvements for you? Yes, sir. All right, greetings and uh, welcome back to this session to everyone. Let's resume. Uh, Council, Ms. Uh, Mole entered a plea to the bench in this case, and we did all of the plea colloquy on the last occasion. I think it was two prior four days. All right, and we also addressed some motions. Uh, was there any evidence presented at the last hearing? If you'll just refresh the court, please. Your Honor, I believe that there were uh, witnesses who were brought by the defense in regard to the defendant's character okay. and those who knew her from the church and they had the Oh, yes. Okay. So now, yes. All right. But that's not the case. The state has not presented the All right. I do recall that now. The purpose of the next court date is on July 20th. Um, Mr. Johnson. Is that the state's understanding of what is going to be taking place both today as well as at the July date? <laughs> All right, then uh, at this point, are you ready for that witness? Yeah. Go ahead. Let me call uh, Peter Johnson. He's in the hallway. Very well. Prayer <laughs> loud. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Welcome. Thank you for your patience while waiting. And I think we're set to go, Mr. Levy. Uh, Mr. Johnson, good afternoon. You might state your name and spell the last name. Peter Johnson. I mean, my last name is J O H N S O N. Thank you. Sir. Are you currently employed? Yes. Sir. Where do you currently work? St. Matthew's House. Okay. What is your uh, formal job title? Vice President of Development. Please briefly explain what your duties and obligations as uh, Vice President of Development. Yeah. Oversee fundraising and public relations for St. Matthew's House. Do you know that the defense in this case was Elena Mole? Yeah. Do you recall when you first met Elena Mole? believe it was summer or fall of 2019, pre-COVID. How was Ms. Mole involved with in that? She started coming to some women's lunches, uh, prayer lunches that we had, uh, with the women from our recovery fund. Okay. Uh, was, did she volunteer for St. Matthew's House? Yes. Uh, when someone volunteers for St. Matthew's House, they have a certain community prayer request. When someone applies to become a volunteer for St. Matthew's House, does St. Matthew's House put a criminal background check on the applicant? Yeah. 
or are you aware of this multi pending criminal case at the time you volunteered the same time? Yes. And that did not disqualify or lose more strength? Uh, not from that specific volunteer capacity, that's just wrong. Do you mind explaining what Ms. Mole did as uh, a volunteer at the same time? She leveraged her contractor connections to raise uh, in excess of conservatively seventy-five thousand dollars worth of gifting time materials to help uh, with a renovation of a house where women in recovery would live and be uh, unified with their children. Did she have any other involvement in, in uh, are you, are you referring to the alcohol property? Yes. That is a, a we have to the room. Yes, sir. Did she have any other involvement other than raising the property to seventy-five thousand dollars? She did, but I, that's the main one that I knew about. I think she was involved um, with helping in discipleship with the women, but I was not really. I'm not that involved in the program. Are you able to go into any detail regarding? So it would, what approximately was raised as part of the $75,000? Uh, new roof, uh, roofing labor, um, lots of materials, uh, tile material, cabinetry, um, some array of contractors, and uh, big box stores like Lowe's, for example. Um, we bought a property that was really adjacent to our existing women's recovery program. We bought a property where the, the house was unfit for habitation and we wanted to be able to expand our program and so we had a major donor who was willing to buy that property and help us renovate it um and she certainly saved us um you know like i said um uh, tens of thousands of dollars if not close to a hundred thousand dollars and she raised in kind money right in kind all in kind no financial all right and all that was in the form of labor or money. In other words, she was essentially in the past, but I don't know if she was robbing particular people in town. <laughs> Is that correct? Correct. Um, were there any concerns from any, or any concerns or complaints from any of the donors that she spoke with that you became aware of? None that I'm aware of. Any concerns from the St. Matthew's house about Ms. Bull's contributions or work as a volunteer? None of that I'm aware of. Thank you, sir. I don't have any further questions. Any uh, state questions? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Mr. Johnson, um, what exactly is the promise that you can feel with? May, may I speak from That's you? Fine. You want know, to just pull the microphone a little closer just yes. so Mr. Jolly can hear? Can you hear us, Mr. Jolly? Very good. Thank you, Your Honor. They made the podium a little lower. It would be better for me. That's just me. That, um, that's it. So, Mr. Johnson, you indicated there was a piece of property that was purchased by another donor. That was, is that what Joe's house is now? Joe's place is a facility in Alba. That's a property that we acquired um, now about four years ago. There was an adjacent property to that, a five acre parcel that was purchased that had an existing house that was really unfit for habitation. And that is the property that was purchased by another person, correct? By a donor, yes. Yeah. And who is that donor? Yeah. Um, grounds, I, one moment, uh, grounds. Overall. Um, I'd rather not say. Okay, did the donor request to be to remain anonymous? Yes, it is. Okay. So that said, once this purchase occurred, tell us how it was that the defendant became involved with fundraising for this project. Well, she had been coming to the jail place. Uh, we had lunches in Naples where they're just worship lunches, and she heard that about this property being purchased. And um, we knew that her talents were in some sort of contracting network. And she said she thought she could get us uh, get some time. And so she started working with me and some of my colleagues in development to find specific, uh, you know, materials for what we needed. For example, the first thing we changed, we uh, 
uh, changed with the, the roof. We okay. took the roof off and put a new roof on. If I can just interrupt this, so you said that her talents were in fundraising. How many did they give you her talents? Her talent was in it. She had a network in um, contract. And that's something she reported to you? I believe so, yeah. I believe she she and her husband did a contract and did some sort of contract. So you had no independent partner. I'm sorry, I spoke over you. Do you have no independent knowledge that she had this particular talent in reaching out to contractors? That was something that her and or her husband conveyed to you? Other volunteers also told me that she that that was what her work was. Okay. Other women who came to this lunch, a lady who organized those lunches had also worked with her. Okay. And that was that was the information that you had in addition to the information or the previous step that she was adjudicated upon. Yes. So you so it was not that she was working with other women to counsel them as far as you understood. As far as you understood, she was working to help you raise money. No, she never raised money. Okay, she was working to help you raise in kind donations. She was working to help us raise in kind donations and she was helping to counsel the women through worship. I thought, pardon. Previously, you said that that's not information you had heard. I said, I know that she came to these lunches, but as far as her relationship and discipling, I, I'm not privy to the personal relationships she might have had with women. Okay, so your testimony is limited to just what she was supposed to be doing or was supposedly doing for St. Matthew's. For St. Matthew's house, both raising gift in kind and coming to the lunch. And did she, when is it that she first offered to provide that assistance? Well, it would have had to been after we purchased the property. She was probably about that. Um, I think it was uh, near the beginning of COVID or even after COVID started. Um, what was that, 2020, February 2020? Some, somewhere around there. I'm not exactly sure. It might have been a little bit before COVID started. Were you aware of exactly what the charges are in this particular case? Um, Uh, I don't know if I could say I knew exactly. I knew there was theft involved. There were accusations of theft. I did know. Did you know that there was an accusation and that the defendant had since had you a plea for exploitation of an elderly person? I didn't know that until later. When, when later did you know that? Or was it after 2020, February of 2020? I believe so, yeah. And did you, you said that you knew about her previous convictions, is that correct? Hmm. Uh, I don't know how much I knew about her previous convictions. Mm -hmm. I knew she was in legal trouble for that. That's about the extent to which I knew. Okay. <coughs> well, that was pending, is that correct? That's what your understanding was? Correct. Information as far as what was pending. Now, you were asked if you were in a criminal history. Or you did a background check? Yes. Okay. What, who does that background check? Our volunteer engagement team. And what does that background check include? I don't know. I don't, I don't do that. So you don't... Okay, so you have no idea how many previous convictions with that she has? No. Did you ever ask her? No. So as far as this background check is concerned, it's just what they're facing right now? No, ma'am. Okay, so as far as Ms. Piemonte Mola is concerned, you didn't know her previous criminal history. Although there was a background check done, all you knew, all you personally knew, Mr. Johnson, was that there was a pending allegation against her. So I don't want to make them very For clarification overall. Can you repeat the question? Yes, I can. 
So as far as your background check, the information that you, Mr. Johnson, had, it was limited to there is a pending charge involving a theft right now. I didn't do the background check. My volunteer engagement team did the background check. I get told by them what whether or not uh, a volunteer would be eligible to do the job that I may want her to do okay. or him. Do you or somebody else determine eligibility? Someone else does. Okay. But you are providing the specific information regarding whether or not there is an issue as far as the background is concerned. Sometimes. Yeah, that was asking. Did you ever have a conversation with her regarding these allegations? Yeah, I can ask him. Just a few moments. Objection sustained. When was it that you? Learn how many previous convictions did you have? I'm not sure I would have learned that. I would have learned that there were uh, allegations um, of criminal activity, but I'm not sure I would have learned specific numbers. So you are not aware that there are actually um, more than 10 convictions that are related to all this. Is that correct? Sustained. Not aware of her priors. Okay. Sustain. I know for the question. Redirect? No, it's just redirect. May I address the table? Yeah. Mr. Johnson, are you aware that is a prior conviction or a criminal offense exclude uh, someone from working the same act of No, we've got a lot of people who have criminal histories working in various capacities. Are you also aware that in, in addition to the in kind donations that were made, is there any uh, repurposing of prior sequels or things like that? Oh, yeah, of course. Can you expand sure. upon that? Sure. It's more than just beyond the scope of donations. It is the fair to be beyond the scope, Mr. Lovey. Sustained. I have no further questions. The state does not have any additional questions. Is Mr. Johnson released by both sides? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I thank you, Mr. Johnson. Have a good day. Thank you. Uh, is this the limited purpose of today's hearing, Mr. Levy? Uh, yes, Judge. That was just, uh, again, thank you, Your Honor, for accommodating testimony for this okay. not available. And to be clear, we have set the finish for the July date. Yes, sir. And how much time did we allocate for that? I believe Your Honor has allocated the same amount of time as we originally All right, let me just confirm that now so that we leave with a clear understanding of what remains. One moment. See if Officer Harrison can text my assistant. But uh, while we wait for that, your understanding is four hours reserved when? That's so your recollection is Mr. Lovey? Yeah, I believe we're going to have two witnesses, potentially three, to step in the day fire. Mr. Hoffman, I think, is planning to have a motion to play the double deputation. Are we ready for that? Sorry, I'm not that plan. No more motions. So, the only motion I'll be getting here is. I have a concern of this case, we have to support the phone call below that. I'm sorry, that's not the issue of that. Motion to have a fire. And what's the length of the witnesses you intend to present, Mr. Lovey? Thank you, Mr. Hahn. I'm talking about witnesses I anticipate. Frankly, I'm uncomfortable telling you. I mean, within the four hours, I don't anticipate going beyond that. Mm -hmm. Two is the third witness is potentially Mr. Bresky, and we're working with him now to get whatever information we need to disclose. So both yeah. sides are confident we can fit it in the remaining time on that date? I don't know how long they're testing. On a situation where I suppose I'm going to have to like, for their witnesses, I'm, I'm hoping that they 
based on what I'm being told, but everything can get in the next okay. I'm, I'm confident that All right. Not. Uh, hello, Melissa. On the Diamante Mole case, I just wanted to confirm that it, I believe it's July 27. Oh. Sorry, July 20. That we have four hours reserved for the conclusion of this uh, proceeding. Yes, it is scheduled for that afternoon. At one one o'clock, one thirty. One thirty for the entire afternoon. All right. Any other clarifications? Uh, you'll make arrangements for Mr. Jolly if he wishes to monitor or participate remotely, Mr. Saman Yes. All right. And he's going to testify remotely? Yes, that was the plan. And there is no objection, Mr. Levy? Uh, no, no objection. All right. Any other details while I have my assistant on the line in order to finish the case? All right. Then it remains as set for the remainder of the case. Thank you. All right, thank you. This matter is completed for day. Thank you. All right. Adjourned. There's another one more case on the docket, William Cordova. Yes, there is actually. Okay, well, <laughs> at this point, okay, at this point, it's probably futile. <laughs> okay. All right. So this was actually for imposition of sentence, if I recall. Yes, that is correct, Your Honor. I believe the defense is going to ask for a continuance. Who is? The defense is going to ask oh. for, for that he continued for two to three months. From today's date? That is that is my understanding, Your Honor. My understanding is that it was known that the witness had provided some testimony and that okay. testimony has not been pursued. All right. And the defense the state does not object to that request? Correct. All right. And uh, are you willing to address this in their absence based on apparently agreements that have been reached? Your Honor, I'm actually, as, as um, your clerk was pointing out to me, but I'm covering from uh, Ms. Nathan, who's not actually covering for somebody else. Okay. But I didn't want to have Ms. Nathan to spend well, time with us. Well, do you wish to reset it with my office arranging with Mr. Millinan to determine if there's been some confusion here? I think that that would be prudent, Your Honor. Okay. And if it turns out that there is that can be a stipulation, and we'll ask Mr. Nolan to. Uh, All right, let me on. just tell my assistant then. Thank you, Your Honor. Office. Melissa, there was one other case here, the Cordoba case. That was for imposition of sentence. Uh, Mr. Millinan and Mr. Cordoba were not seen today. Uh, however, Ms. Horowitz, on behalf of other assistant state attorneys, is indicating that they, uh, there may be an agreement for that matter to be continued. However, given that we don't have the participants what i'd like to do is on the court's initiative to have you reach out and ms borowitz who would be the contact at state attorney or Ms. rumley or ms mason it would actually be Ms. so melissa on case number 17 cf 795 if you could reach out to ms rumley and mr millinan and indicate that the case was called as set today at 1 30 and to see if uh they wish to enter an, into an agreement as to whether the matter will be continued or have it set for another court date to be to address it thank you now i do need to give it a control date for the clerk uh melissa would you suggest perhaps on friday by then we should have reached both sides and we should be able to know uh, what would be occurring. No, I wouldn't think that quickly. I would think maybe um, the next case management or next plea date and then, let me see. Well, the only concern I had was whether we were in a bench warrant situation. It doesn't appear that that's... It doesn't, Your Honor, but we had anticipated counsel. Right. Being. So I would like 
to see if you could, uh, let me give it as a control date just for the clerk's purposes, uh, whatever the next case management date is. Yeah, actually I have it Thursday, don't I? Yeah, let me just set it, Melissa, let's see if they could address this at case management this Thursday. I know we've got a lot of cases, but I, I don't want to, uh, you know, this needs to be addressed as serious charges and we need not to lose track of it. On the 130 docket? Right. And the parties either side or both can appear remotely if they wish, obviously. Welcome data information. So uh, if you'll reach out to Mr. Millenin's office as well as Ms. Rumley, I think Ms. Horowitz can also do that after Ms. Rumley, so. Okay, so I think then just have Melissa reach out to uh, Mr. Mellon and then. Yes, please. Okay, Melissa, if you'll okay. follow up on that, and Madam Clark will be addressed on Thursday. All right, thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Adjourned. Yeah, yeah. All correct. <laughs> <laughs>